Well, Sir Thomas, Sir Thomas More. How do, how do you like to be addressed? Uh, Sir Thomas or...? Tommy's all right. Tommy? <laughs> yes. Or Mr. Heston or...? Chuck is fine. Chuck? Yes. You're not crazy about Charlton? No, my mother calls me Charlton, and uh, Mr. Uh, Cecil B. DeMille used to call me Charlton, but I, it's, it's a, kind yeah. of a, a, an odd name, isn't it? Yeah, and they, they're See, not... if we were broadcasting this in the States, where my mother might hear me, I wouldn't dare say that. you would have to... People would have to call you Charlton? Yeah. No, my mother, though. Yeah, yeah it's quite... Well, we have a football team here of that ilk as well. Bobby Charlton. Bobby Charlton. Yes. He's not a football team in himself, but almost. Yes, almost. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a fabulous costume. You, Thank you. You, you uh, get out of bed of a morning and, and leap straight into it. Yes, it? just get right into it, so I get into the part, you know. <laughs> Does it help? Do you, feel, do you feel Sir Thomas Moore coming over you? Yes, as you, as that's, you that's really the... true. I've played uh, a lot of these fellows that wear dresses and things like that. And uh, <laughs> yes. funny wigs and you have, noses. haven't you? You've oh yes! Oh, yeah. I've gone on the screen. I've gone years without ever putting a pair of trousers on. <laughs> Must be you know where to put things. That's very difficult. Yes, that's you're quite right. No pockets. I've often thought no I wouldn't pockets. like to be a woman no. for the same reason. Chainmail is uh, is uh, has its drawbacks. So do uh, so do togas and gowns. They are they're kind of spiffy though, isn't it? But it is really. But I mean, do you like? Dressing up. Do you like the, the costuming part of? of I like to of play uh, real great men of the past. I've done perhaps more than most of my fellows, and uh, it's it's an interesting challenge to play Thomas More in in what is surely an English masterpiece, and to play it here in London in the first production since Paul Schofield's memorable creation of the part in 1960. Is as an American actor, I think. Uh, a, an honor, truly, and we've got a, a marvelous company. We're having a magnificent time over at the. At you the had you had extremely good critiques, and and some what I thought very uh, cutting ones, which which were based not so much on your performance, but but based on the on fact the play, that as which is, is out, outrageous, really. This uh, Man for All Seasons is undeniably a, a great play, and will be performed. Uh, uh, for generations beyond us. It's uh, funny, Irving Wardle in The Times said that he didn't think the I part know. of Sir Thomas More was all that great, but that you gave the definitive performance. Well, he was very generous. Right, and I'm... other people have said, oh, they seem unable to accept you as, as in that, but mainly it seems, not because of the great roles that you did on film, but mainly because of the Jason Colby part. It, it, that keeps being dragged up. Does that annoy you? No, not really. I, I'll tell you the most important thing I ever learned about uh, notices and critics, and I was grateful for Mr. Wardle's kind words and the things other people said, but I was doing a play with Laurence Olivier a number of years ago, many, many years ago, and I was young and green. And we got, and perhaps deserved, just terrible notices, and we were going to close at the end of the week, which we did. So I found myself at two o'clock in the morning, all alone, the part, opening night party having disappeared. And I was with uh, Olivier and a bottle of brandy, and uh, I was striving for an attitude of uh, detachment, and I said, well, I suppose you learned to dismiss the bad notices. And he took my wrist and he said, Chuck, what's much more important and much harder, you have to learn to dismiss the good ones. And that is true. Yes. That's really true. Uh, you seem attracted. You have to do the work for the work, you know. Yeah. That's... Uh, You've never... You love acting, don't you? That's it. It's my life. Yes. Is that why you didn't pursue a career in politics, which I think you could easily have done? Um, I think so, yes. Um, indeed, I know so. Um, however seriously I considered it, and it wasn't very serious, the thing of running for the Senate. But I thought, my word, I'll never be able to act again, never to play Macbeth again, never to play uh, Sir Thomas More again. I didn't know at the time I was going to get another chance at it. I've done it a couple of times. But all those marvelous parts. Uh, that I, I couldn't give it up. I, I couldn't bear it. What about the part of American president of America? I've done that three times. You know? <laughs> well, of course you have. <laughs> yes, I've been president three yeah. times. Of course you have. Yes. But um, it seems to us, or it seems to me, looking at, at uh, as we get into the run-up for the American election, that, that nobody seems particularly convincing as a candidate. Nobody seems, at least the American public don't seem convinced, I think. They need another film star. I think. Uh, I'll tell if, you. If Clint Eastwood doesn't go for it, I think you should. No, uh, I've uh, no, absolutely not. I, I think we've got some some good candidates, 
and uh, it's we we have a a rather clumsy process of sorting them out. You know, it's going to take uh, what the the better part of the next uh, twelve months to arrive at who's going to be nominated by either party, and it always seems a. a big gefuffle at the beginning and people drop out and stumble and put their feet wrong and so on. Um, but uh, we haven't been at it as long as you people have here, but we've, uh, we're still there. <laughs> Isn't it an enormous attraction for you to do theater as distinct from film? I mean, absolutely, you, um, absolutely. But does your film, your film and television work subsidize your theater work? Well, but I don't, I don't denigrate uh, work in the screen. I, I love it. I would, I would be very, very sorry to give up either. And as long as people keep giving me jobs, I won't. My ideal is to switch from one to the other, which is roughly what I've been doing over the years. I was here two years ago uh, on the stage in uh, King Mutiny Court Martial. Uh, now I'm back in Man for All Seasons. And uh, frankly, um, I would, on, on the stage, I'd just as soon act either in Los Angeles, where I can sleep in my own bed, uh, or here in London. I've acted on Broadway, and uh, this is the greatest city in the world and the capital of the English-speaking theater, and you're, you're up to your neck in marvelous actors to work with. And is that not intimidating? Well, do, you, do you get intimidated? No, you can't. You know, for example, Paul Schofield created Thomas More on the stage and on the screen won the Academy Award in the screen. It's considered the definitive performance, but I've followed Laurence Olivier and Ralph Richardson and Michael Redgrave in Shakespearean parts on the stage, and why not? It's, that's, well, that's what great parts are for, to be played again and again. Uh, this part will be played by somebody after me and somebody after him and somebody after him. It'll go on. And uh, you got, you got the, the, what was the big break? The big break. Uh, you, what was your first film? Was it black and white? Wasn't it? The first film was a black and white film. I had done a, a 16 millimeter version of Julius Caesar before that, a kind of a semi amateur version, and then I did a, a sort of what they used to call film noir, uh, called Dark City. Then the second picture I did was uh, for DeMille about the circus, and that won the Academy Award, yeah. and then so on, and then Ten Commandments, and so on, and so on. And here we are sitting here, and I'm wearing a dress, and you're wearing a gray suit. <laughs> a fine way yes. to treat a great leader of men. Have, have people tended to treat you with more than your due deference because of the nature of the roles that you've played? That's an interesting question, Terry. I don't know. Maybe it's it's either that or because I'm six foot three and I have a broken nose and a yeah, oh yeah. voice. <laughs> You're pretty intimidating. But uh, have you? I think that may, that may be true. What um, what about its effect on you? Has it made you feel that you should be treated with more than due deference? No, I tell you what. Playing men like Sir Thomas More and uh, uh, Richelieu and uh, Jefferson and Jackson and all those formidable, truly formidable individuals just gives you a sense of the dimension of your, your own smaller dimension. Uh, I remember when, uh, when I was going to play uh, Michelangelo uh, in The Agony and the Ecstasy, and a British journalist, uh, Michelangelo was physically quite short. He was about five, six, I think. And he said, don't you think you're a bit tall to play Michelangelo? I said, no, I think I'm a bit small. Yeah in a different kind of way. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, when you finish here now, you go back to the States with the, with the play, or you go, you're close, taking it on tour? Well, we close here January 9th at the Savoy. Then we are, I'm happy to announce on your program, uh, reopening the Theatre Royal in Newcastle, which has been closed. It's one of the oldest and most beautiful theatres in London, <coughs> in, in Britain, I'm told. And we reopen it, um, the week after we close here in January, and then I, I believe we're doing a week in Brighton and maybe one more week, then I'll go back. Yes. But um, it's been, um, is now, and looks, looks to go on being a marvelous experience. I've, I've filmed in London, I've acted on the stage in London, I've uh, toured as a, as a private citizen here and done uh, speeches and all kinds of things. It's, it, I'm very glad to be back. It's good to see you. Hey, you're, you're working with, with an old chum of yours, aren't you? Yes, Roy Kinnear. Who, who well, whatever, whatever happened to him? He... I don't know. He's, he's, he's gone off a bit, you know. It's, uh, has he? Yes, yes, he has. <laughs> uh, 
Yes. <laughs> well, of course, it's a pity uh, that you have to work with somebody uh, like that. And for, he used to, sorry, Roy, wait, wait, sh sh sorry to interrupt a well, fascinating No, fascinating please, sorry, we're talking here. Yes, it's fascinating. Issue. I love oh, yeah. it. It's a fascinating Roy, interview, but look, we've only got 15 minutes. 15 minutes for what? Come in. Get, no, no, I, I, I've, I've, got, I've, got, I've got your coat here. Go, oh, please, now look. You cannot, ladies and gentlemen, Roy, can you? You can. I told you he'd get married. We've only got 50 minutes. I, 50 minutes. So could you ask the questions a bit quick? Yes, sir. Well, you faster, like, faster. Yeah. And do you really like yes. working with him? Yes, yes, yes I do. Do yes, you, good, do yes, you yes, like working with him? Yes, he's my size. He's very big for you, isn't he? Well, no, he's no, big for you to work my size. Is he? Well, I cut him down to size in the end. What part could you possibly be playing in this this intellectual piece by Robert Bolt? I play bits and bobs, you know. Yeah. All different characters. They're all different. I mean, they all look exactly the same, but but I wear a different hat sometimes. I take this hat off. What? Yeah, terrific. Yeah. Very, very good. good. Very, very good. good. And then put that on again. <laughs> you don't know who yeah. it is. <laughs> Have you worked with... with uh, yes, uh, Roy and I worked yeah. together in The Three Musketeers. Had a marvellous time. And you want yeah. I know, Roy. Yeah. It's going to be... What time does the curtain go on? Uh, 7.30. It's all right. 7.30. Plenty, 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 plenty of time. Plenty of time. Yeah. 15 minutes to get dozens of people disappointed if we don't get there. Yes. <laughs> you will. But I mean... See, Roy starts the play. Yeah. So <laughs> Do you? <laughs> and then it goes downhill after. Well, that's... So you're... Are you... I mean, what are you doing? Dressing, perhaps? Are you a dresser? Or a bit, but, well, I do sometimes. I, I have a pair of slippers I put on, Chuck. And and I sometimes tell you, you I, I'm not, not very good on props, that's my trouble. Uh, well, apart from other things. And um, I, uh, I usually put the wrong foot in the wrong shoe, and he goes around like that. What, what we've now, now done, we've taped inside the left-hand slipper L and the right-hand slipper R. Ah. So that's... Yes. that's Never well, that, that is a bit of a... But that'll of help. I'm facing the other way. But that's an issue. One doesn't know where to go. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think there's a future for you in uh, epic movies of any kind? That, that if, perhaps if they some them, will be, rub yeah. off yes. some Charity of that... Tears, oh, yes. Line of that's very true. I, used, I played, actually, in an epic movie once. I played um, uh, um, um, a gladiator instructor. Mm -hmm. Spartacus, was, was it? Yeah, no, 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 no. I played it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So is that it? I mean, have you uh, have you finished all the well, questions? Well, we were hoping that we could I've, could go up. Uh, well, I've, I've got your coat here, Chuck. All right. um, we were oh, hoping that, that it, perhaps the interview could, no, could go well, up. I'm sorry for a bit. Know, like, uh, could we just? I think this is the kind of coat boy well, George I, might like. You I thought. Give him a shot. What do you mean, boy I, George? It's boy Roy here. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but I say. Could I just? I, well, I thought that. Come on, now, right, If get we it could on. go well, the great on, thing is the, uh, with the, the interview is complete. A little bit, come they, on, they up, a little bit longer. We, we might. Higher, up more, no, no, up no, more. No. There you go. Because there we go. Because yeah. If we don't go now, I'm afraid uh, we'll no, never get there. Are you, yeah. are you ready? Yes. I'm no ready. one will recognise you in that. That's yes, fine. No. <laughs> we can just prove we can slip out. No one will. Slip out. No one will. Yes, quite. Well, thank you. Thank you for taking my guest off. It was nothing. Thank you, Charlton Heston, ladies and gentlemen. Roy Kinnear, men for all seasons.